Many times you hear actors talking about relaxation. You have to work, you have to learn how to relax, you have to relax, you have to relax. And I tell people this, here's why you need to relax. There's a very, very good chance, and we've all been through this. You go to your audition, you get in your car, and you drive home, and you go, ah, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. And we go, yeah, too late now. They were filming before. The reason why those ideas come in, it's because you relaxed. You finally let go. When you were in the room, you were nervous. And tension, by default, causes stress. And your ideas don't translate into the body. It's all about having this in the body. They used to say that Marlon Brando had a four-lane freeway from here to here. Meaning he did, he was so impulsive, was in the moment. And someone said, most of us have a goat path. That's what we are. You need to get all of this in the body and be able to perform and do what you want. And one, it's not the only one, one of the tools that we use is relaxation. Now there's many forms of relaxation. The one I'm about to show you is primarily based on Lee Strasberg's relaxation. And having said that also, it's slightly different. Look, when I went to, to Strasbourg, uh, Lee wasn't there, he had passed away, but there was eight teachers there and all eight taught it completely differently. Slightly different. From those eight, three of them, I, you know, every teacher slightly different, I kind of went with those three because they, they influenced me differently and I understood it differently. And there are parts of Stella Adler that comes into this. And we'll talk about the basic difference between teachers here. The big names, the big names of that time were Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Meisner. Now, Lee and Stella both went to Stanislavski, who came from the Moscow Theater. He, was, uh, he went to America and he did some shows, and they met him and said, hey man, what are you doing here? You know, how are you doing? And he showed them these tools over here. He showed Lee these. And later on, Stella met him. And by the time Stella met him, he was doing this. And Stella went back and said to Lee, listen, he showed me this. And Lee said, yeah, but he showed me this. And Lee developed the method from that. And Stella developed her own technique. And they're just different ingredients. And then from that, Meisner was a student of Lee's because they met at the actor's studio. And Meisner's got his own thing going. And then there's teachers that come below that, the teachers of today's world. But the big ones, most you can connect easily, easily 90 to 99% of the world's best actors to those three names. Here is, and this is a very watered down version, but so you understand it, here is the basic difference. And that's why I tell people, learn them all, have them in your belt as ammunition, and be ready to use them. Lee Strasberg would say, let's assume it's cold. Lee would say, find a moment or remember a moment when it was cold. It's cold a lot, we're in Melbourne. If you go outside, you feel the cold. And Lee would say, sit there, feel the cold. Don't think cold, feel the cold. Where is the cold? Do you feel the cold here? Do you feel the cold there? And then you'd start taking in the place, taking in the cold. Stella would say, forget all that, act cold. And Stella would say, just act cold. This is what acting cold looks like. But the thing that people don't understand about Stella is while she's said, act cold, she would also add, where exactly do you feel the cold? Which is similar to what Lee said. They're just going about it from a different direction. And Meisner, to water this down, would just say, where are you right now? Are you cold or hot? And he would say, go with where you're at right now and then focus on that cold. That's a very watered down version of the differences in how they act or how they teach. But the end result is the same. And I tell people, who cares? Learn them all, their techniques. These are amazing people. Don't reinvent the will. The, the will's right there. Learn the will. They're all different, but learn them all. So you don't think it's in your body. One of the big things that we do, and they, they still do it at Strasbourg if you go there, it's called relaxation. You do it on a chair. One of the reasons we do it on a chair is because you're guaranteed a chair on a film set. You can relax in a chair. And the way I tell people to think about it is this. When you get home, it's Friday night, you're finished with your day job, you're gonna sit on that couch and you're gonna go, ah, and your body relaxes. The body relaxes by moving and making a sound. When you cry, you laugh, moving and sound, the body lets go of tension. If there is tension, the body 
stops this from translating into this. So one thing I tell people is just to sit in the chair, let go of everything and relax. It looks like this. Someone said you should be like a jacket on the chair and you just need enough energy to sit on the chair. That's important because it keeps you here. And the other thing I want you to understand is, I want you to understand the difference between relaxing and awareness. Think awareness. Because when we have a morning class, I tell them, you just relax, you just woke up, you're not tired. So the difference between someone lying on the floor and going to sleep, that's relaxing. We're thinking awareness. Are you aware of the body? in that moment? Is your mind in the room or are you daydreaming? One simple thing to do so you understand the difference, and you don't have to do this, but this is one thing I tell people just so they understand that they get into it. The idea being this, and I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. As I rotate this shoulder right here, I feel the muscles. They're right there. They're kind of folding over. I feel the muscle right there. It popped. It made a sound and you make a sound as you move. It looks like this. Uh, Now, your mind will stay with this muscle for about 15, 20 seconds at best. Your mind will tune out. There's a good chance as you move this, you're gonna start thinking, what am I doing here? What's this got to do with acting? Blah, 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 blah. Or I've learned somewhere else. I say, great. That moment, you're in your head. You're daydreaming. Catch that. Bring it back to what you feel physically, right there, right there, right there, and make a sound. The other thing that happens is your mind runs ahead. I'm rotating my shoulder. When I get to the top, I'm going to go to the bottom, then I'll do my left shoulder. And I'll do, yeah, yeah, great. You haven't even gone up here, and yet your mind has already gone to the movement ahead. Those two procedures, drifting off and running ahead, and other ones never go away. No matter how long you do this for, they never go away. They will always be there. So I tell people, you're focused, you tune out, you refocus, there will always be a gap. You're going to get on a film set and you're going to fight with everyone at home because you have to change their schedule and you're all women and you have to drive halfway to China and you can't find parking and you get there and you're so stressed and your mind's racing and we go, no, 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 get back to it, get back to the body. So you're focused, you tune out, you refocus, the gap will always be there. We get better at making the gap smaller and smaller. So I'm here, I get distracted, I go back to the body back to the body, back to the body. Sometimes the longer you do this, it's like a diet. You just get back to it in one breath. You just go, (sighs) and your mind and your voice and your body is here. So as you move something, whatever it is, I don't care, move. I'm just using this as an example. Move to actually feel it. Now, remember one of my teachers said there's a big difference between saying I feel it and actually feeling it. You will learn the difference when you do this consistently. So it does also help, and you don't have to do this. It's just one path. If at the beginning especially, if you isolate the joints, what I mean by that is this. If you're doing just the fingers, drop the body and rotate the fingers. Do the wrist down here. Don't do the wrist up here. All this is working for nothing. We're talking at the beginning now, so you literally do the whole body and you become aware of it. Rotate the wrist down here. It looks like this. Uh, do the elbow, move the elbow up and down, and you do it with your eyes closed for focus, obviously, otherwise you're staring at things. Elbow up and down, right there. The shoulder has more range of movement. It's okay to shift your body weight around, get your head out the way. Uh, Now, I don't want you to pre-plan things. I don't want you to do this. I'm going to move this way, and I'm going to move this way. No, that's pre-planning. I don't care if you go here five times. Just to feel this joint right there. Now, as you rotate this shoulder, be aware of this creeping up. Be aware of other muscles jumping in that you don't need. And it's okay to shift and adjust as you do them. So you're not just sitting there doing this. You go, uh, and relax. I did this very, very generally just to show you. But when you're done, one move, like the arm. When you finish, I want you to sit in your chair and I want you to feel the difference between the two. I already feel it. This arm is very different from this arm. 
that little awareness brings this and this here. You're here. You're more grounded. You're more in the room. You don't have to go from this arm to this arm. Once again, that's the brain making a checklist, and we don't want that. We want you to sit down in the chair, <sighs> look for areas of tension, look for areas that you're not even aware that are there, so by moving them. Having said that, assuming you've done this arm, with your toes, in LA, they take their shoes off, they take their belts off, let go of your gut, so you, you rotate. Don't use the floor, you'll strain all the muscles. Pick up your leg, rotate the ankle. Pick up your leg, your knee. All you can do with the knee is go up and down. Now, here's what I want you to understand. As you pick up your knee, and I'll overdo this so you understand it. As I pick up my leg, uh, there's a strain there. There's a lot of muscles needed to pick up this leg. It's quite heavy. It's heavier than you think. So you pick up the leg. If I let go of my leg, I will feel or hear this, uh, and the rest of the body will collapse and open up. And I tell people, great, now that you let go of the leg, all these other muscles jumped in that you didn't need. I now want you to pick up the leg again. When you pick up this leg, there's tension there. And with this leg, I want you to relax everything else, relax your shoulders, just enough energy to pick up your leg. One is a small move right there. The other one is to kick it out to the side. Uh, if you feel anything tensing up while you're moving, relax it. Relax it. Uh, when you finish that leg, your body will still let go to some degree, but you'll get better at just using what's needed. As I said earlier, I could find 10 different teachers from LA and they will all, every single one of them will have different opinions about this. Some will say yes, some will say no, some will say yes. And I tell people, forget that. Try them all. I want you to try every exercise every acting teacher ever tells you. So you know it. Try this, try something else. At the end of the day, you're out there in the, in the field, you're gonna use what you have. So try this leg, then try this leg, or go from leg to arm, but get to every part of the body. With your face, be very, very specific. Don't be general. Key word in acting, specific. Specific is number one. Big word. Be specific with the jaw. Rotate the jaw. Rotate your tongue. Squint this side. Squint this side. Relax your face. Relax. There are teachers that would allow you to do this and this and this. It's okay to do that. One teacher said to me, hey, what if you got makeup on? I said, yeah, he's got a good point. Learn to do it with, learn to do it without. Relax your face. When you rotate your head, three things happen with your head. This happens. This happens and the jaw clenches. Just, uh, once again, I don't want you to go like this, then like this. That's you predetermining a move. Find it as you rotate your neck. And then what we want is this. Let's assume there's pain there. Work around it. Work around it. Work around it. Your mind, this up here, it's your number one enemy, will be jumping around everywhere. I want you to think of your focus like a pendulum. A pendulum swings in and out. You're good for about 10, 15 seconds at best. You will swing in and out all the time. So what you're doing here is you're learning how to focus. It's a discipline, it doesn't just happen. If you're out of shape, this ain't happening, I got news for you. It's a discipline to learn to catch your mind and bring it back to the body. So now we're rotating the head. Be aware the shoulders make a sound. Uh, now, there are many different sounds and there are very different speeds. Three basic sounds, there's many different. One is just exhaling. Uh, the other one's what they call an elongated sound or a long sound. Take the sound, stretch it, and just cut it off. Uh, and the other one's an explosive sound. Ha, ha, ha. When you use them, there are no rules. Some moves favor certain sounds. I'll show you some. The other thing is about moving. This is too slow. This is too fast. Just move enough to feel the body. Feel the body to bring this here. We've done the head. 
with the spine. One teacher of mine said, imagine there's a pole there, so you work around it. Looks like this. Uh, not all teachers did that. Some did. Another teacher, and this is a big one. There's three big moves. One is rotating your head. The other one's leaning forward. You open your legs. You drop your arms in between your legs. And I tell people, crumble the body forward. Don't rush. Imagine someone's holding your shoulders. So this collapses. And then you go down. It's not yoga. I don't care how far down you go. It's irrelevant. Go down uh, as far as you can. I'll stop there just for argument's sake. And then come back up slowly, slowly, slowly. Make a sound as you work. We want this clean. After a while, people go down. They rotate their neck down there because the muscles hang differently. They punch out to the side because the muscles hang differently. Come back up slowly. Make a sound as you work. Another move is this. You're going to take your arms, and this is where the explosive sound lends itself very well, and you're going to punch forward. It looks like this. Ha, 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 ha. Many acting schools do that. Ha, 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 ha. And they feel this energy rush, and I go, yeah, great. That's one move. Another move is this. Imagine you're going to punch out to the side. First of all, feel the chest opening up. Even if you make a sound and just go, ha. And then you can go, ha, 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 and relax. There's three big moves. Rotating your neck, punching out to the side, leaning forward. Go from joint to joint to joint to joint to joint to joint. That's relaxation 101. The big rule is this. I often tell people in between moves, just sit there and Feel the difference. Are you able to keep your mind in the room longer? Are you able to stop the smallest distraction from getting to you so you're staying here? Are you able to feel the body longer? Are you able to stay in your mind as you're moving? Now, please understand this. With relaxation and with sensory work, which we'll talk about in the next chapter, all this is as good as a diet. This is what most, by most I mean at least 80% of the actors out there don't understand. If you diet the day before your wedding, it ain't going to add up to anything. If you do this exercise the day before you shoot, it's not going to help you at all. Remember the two or three hours we asked for a day? If you do this consistently every day, you get to know your body. You get on a film set, you get stressed out, because when you get on a film set, they don't talk to you, they don't give a shit. They just go, hey man, sit here, park here, do here, da, 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 da. And they set up this amazing set, and you as the actor are the last to turn up. And all of a sudden, you're staring at 50 complete strangers staring at you, and you're going to do some big emotional thing. Oh my God, your body clamps up. It gets tight. Nothing comes out. Nothing. And you get nervous. But if you do this consistently, you can get to the film set and just go, I'm here, I'm present. Once again, we've done close to zero as an actor. But this matters. I tell people it's like salt in the food. No one goes and eats your food. Oh my God, very good salt. No one even notices that it's there. But if you take it away, they notice immediately. This is the same as salt. If you don't do this as an actor, you will feel the difference. If you have it there, no one will notice, but you know it's there, meaning you're able to relax more. Relaxing does not mean, mean walk around like a wet noodle. That's relaxed. That's not giving a shit. That's not what this is about. This is about bringing this, this, and the body here as one. So now I'm ready to bring my ideas, and they will actually flow from here in the body. That's what they say. If you don't have it in the body, none of this matters. That's the primary reason why we do relaxation, and that's just one version of it. Please do this religiously. Think like an athlete stretching. This is us stretching. Relax.